Hello and welcome to today's episode on maximum phonation time. In our setup of normal people in the range 20 to 40 years, the maximum phonation time measured by aerophone was on average 15 seconds for females and 18 seconds for males. The table on the left documents that the clients used have a normal closed face of the vocal folds and on the right represent the maximum phonation time seen in the bottom of the table. How this measurement should be made can be further discussed. We have used electroglottography in this symbol. Aerophone is preferred due to its precision. In professional singers, we try to measure the phonation time in the lower and upper registers, which are very well defined. And it is interesting to note that the phonation times are higher in the upper registers. The phonation time correlates to jitter percent and shimmer percent. The higher phonation time, the smaller jitter and shimmer. The peak flow measurements show normal lung capacity. Statistical analysis suggests no correlation to hearing. We use software from SIGIT to ensure that the measurements of phonation times were in these two registers. The simplest aerodynamic parameter of voicing is the maximum phonation time in seconds. It consists of the prolongation of an R ah for as long as possible after maximal inspiration and at a spontaneous comfortable pitch and loudness. It is one of the more widely used clinical measures in voice assessment worldwide. A prior demonstration is necessary and free trials are required, the longest being selected for comparison to norm. The phonation quotient indicates the amount of air consumed on phonation and is obtained by division of the vital lung capacity by the maximum phonation time. Real measured maximum phonation time can be divided into normal, abnormal, and neither in seconds. Note that glottal flow rate is the same as the above mentioned phonation quotient. Vital capacity in milliliters divided by maximum phonation time in seconds. Carlsen et al. have made a case control study of 80 cancer patients, 32 recurrent palsy patients, 23 dysfunctional and 75 degenerative inflammation patients, together with a control group of 98 healthy subjects. They concluded that maximum phonation time analysis segregated with all determined analysis between patients and control conditions except the dysfunctional group. This is well known that dysfunctional groups have too many variables to be used for maximum phonation time. So, it L show that voice and respiration are important when it comes to quality of life in stroke patients. Lung function assessment in 32 out of 70 cases revealed general reduced cough effectiveness and six developed pneumonia in the first observation time during two months. 47 patients were able to perform maximum phonation time on day two. Patients with maximum phonation time of 10 seconds or longer had less frequent aspiration. Maximum phonation time was a valuable measurement. Bayon shows that the maximum phonation time can be used in Parkinson patients. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.